Remember, we agreed. You thought it might be keeping you up at night and that you were getting all uptight? It's just fun. A spectacular part of this complete breakfast. Hey, the crust is sure tender. Real fruit filling. Food trends come and go, but the warm and fresh taste of breakfasts made in the 70s is still unforgettable. What made the breakfasts from the 70s so special? These dishes were filled with creativity and taste. The cereals, pastries, and savory classics made the mornings magical, and kids couldn't resist these flavors. Join us as we look at 20 famous breakfasts from the 1970s we want back. Danish ring. They look bakery fresh. They taste bakery fresh, but you can't get them at any bakery. Then where do you get them? From Kellogg, in the toaster pastry section. Danish Go-Rounds Danish Go-Rounds was introduced by Kellogg's in 1968 as a more sophisticated option for adults and Pop-Tarts, which were mainly marketed toward kids. These pastries were twisty-shaped toasters filled with jam and topped with sugar and colorful icing. Danish Go-Round gained popularity for its slogan, Danish Go-Rounds, Toaster Pastries, All Grown Up. This slogan was likely an attempt to appeal to adult consumers. Danish Go-Rounds came in at least four flavors, strawberry, blueberry, brown sugar cinnamon, and cinnamon raisin. They could be eaten straight from the package or lightly heated in the toaster. However, these cereals had structural issues as they were made with coiling pastry dough, which caused them to crumble easily during shipping or handling. Kellogg tried to address this issue by introducing Danish rings in 1977. These pastries were oval-shaped and an improved version of the Danish go-round. Still, the pastry had yet to compete against an already famous name, Pop-Tarts. By the mid-1970s, Danish go-rounds began disappearing from the shelves, leading to their discontinuation in 1977. Danish rings were also discontinued in the 1980s. All the 70s kids surely recall the most favorite circus-themed cereal. We are talking of Kaboom! It's here! No Kaboom vitamin cereal! Even the candy stars are vitamin charged! Kaboom! Kaboom was introduced in 1969 by General Mills. It was primarily popular among children for its colorful appeal and vitamin-fortified rich taste, which attracted both children and their parents. Kaboom was also famous for its circus-themed cereal. The cereal box was bright yellow and featured a smiling circus clown mascot. The cereal contained oats in various shapes, such as smiling clown faces, marshmallow bears, lions, elephants, and stars. Kaboom was famous for its slogan, The Breakfast Blast. It remained a mandatory breakfast at all houses throughout the 1990s. However, the brand started to lose its initial appeal in the early 2000s and was eventually discontinued in 2010 due to less demand and popularity. What sweetened mornings across America? Mapo, the iconic maple-flavored oatmeal. You have a surprise for me? Yes, sir. It's a new breakfast cereal called Mapo. From now on, you're really going to like oatmeal. Mapo was founded in 1953 by the Maltex Corporation. It was an instant hit with kids and parents alike. Its ingredients included rolled oats sweetened with maple flavor. Mapo became famous because of its marketing campaign featuring the animated character Marky Mapo. His catchy slogan, I want my Mapo, quickly became a breakfast time anthem. Mapo gained its place in the hearts of children everywhere. Mapo is low in fat and sodium, cholesterol free, and non-GMO verified. It also has baked maple chips for added flavor and two-thirds less sugar than the leading brand of flavored hot cereal. By the late 20th century, its popularity started to diminish. It's still produced today by Homestead Farm Incorporated. Everyone loved the canned blessing that Spam was, famous for its easy-to-make routine on a busy morning. Mmm, Spam! Make mine thick! You don't need a thick slice because... Spam so delicious, even a thin slice... Fried Spam Spam was a popular breakfast component in many American homes during the 1970s. Fried Spam is a popular dish made by pan-frying slices of Spam until they are crispy. It's often served with eggs and rice. To make fried Spam, you only need Spam canned meat, soy sauce, sake, mirin, brown sugar, and oil for frying. Then Spam was cut into slices, pan-fried until caramelized, 
and simmered in a homemade teriyaki sauce for extra flavor. It gained popularity in the U.S. and especially in Hawaii. It is best enjoyed because it can be eaten with various dishes like Spam Masubi and breakfast fried rice. When fried, Spam becomes crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside, offering a savory flavor with a hint of sweetness. Fried Spam was a quick and easy to make option, taking only a few minutes to prepare. Leftovers could be stored in the refrigerator for up to three days and reheated or microwaved. The juicy steak was all the Americans needed for their protein intake to kickstart their days. Breakfast Steak The tradition of serving steak and eggs originated in Australia. Americans adopted this breakfast during and after World War II. It quickly became a breakfast offering in American diners during the 70s. American Marine and NASA astronauts adopted this dish as a protein-rich day-to-day breakfast. The economic boom in the country also led to increased beef consumption at that time. Beef steaks were served by the diners and in homes across the country. The dish typically consisted of beef steak and fried eggs. The eggs were cooked to preference, such as sunny side up or scrambled. The dish was then garnished with red pepper flakes and parsley. After cooking, the steak was rested to help retain its juiciness. The eggs could also be cooked in the same pan for added flavor. Enjoying your morning coffee at home is simple, and what if it tastes like diner's coffee? Indeed, Brim Coffee was a favorite for all the right reasons. If caffeine bothers you, try delicious new ground roast Brim decaffeinated coffee, also available freeze-dried. Brim Coffee. Brim Coffee was founded in the early 1960s by General Foods and became the favorite home coffee brand of the 1970s. It was a canned, strictly decaffeinated coffee product. The brand gained popularity in the 1960s and 80s. It was famous for its catchy marketing slogan, Fill it to the rim with brim. It appealed to people who preferred the taste of coffee and caffeine. Brim coffee allowed the consumers to fill their cups with flavor, not caffeine. This decaffeinated product made its mark among the people because of its rich taste and quality. Brim coffee disappeared from shelves in the mid-1990s due to corporate reshuffling after General Foods merged with Kraft. The Brim brand continued to be produced under the ownership of various companies after its debut and was eventually acquired by Sensio in 2014. Sensio applied the Brim name to conventional drip coffee makers and other coffee equipment. The brand focused on making high-quality designs for coffee makers and equipment. It has been relaunched as a line of consumer coffee gear, including burr grinders, coffee machines, pour-over coffee kits, and cold brew kits. Do you remember the beloved slogan, We are the Freakies? Oh, we are the Freakies, we are the Freakies, and this is a Freaky Street. We are the Freakies, we are the Freakies, and this is a Freaky Street. We never miss a meal, because we love our cereal. Freakies. Ralston created Freakies in 1972. It was a crunchy, light brown cereal with a unique shape. Known for its whimsical sweet flavor, Freakies appealed to consumers looking for a colorful and fun breakfast option. This cereal featured seven woodland creatures in different colors collectively called the Freakies. These characters were Boss Moss, Cow Mumble, Ham Hose, Goody Goody, Rumble, Gargle, and Snorledorf. This appealed to children and those who enjoyed a playful and imaginative breakfast experience. The creative marketing campaign, led by the Wells Rich Green Advertising Agency and featuring catchy TV commercials written by Jackie End, further drove its popularity. Despite early success, the brand stopped production in 1976. Ralston was disappointed by the sales result and decided to discontinue the brand before the year was up. Attempts to revive it in the 1980s as an alien-themed cereal with marshmallows failed to capture the original magic. Freaky's remains a nostalgic icon, appearing in pop culture moments like Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, and The Burbs, and even in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Talking of freaks, let's discuss the favorite breakfast of health freaks, the Bran Muffins. Bran Muffins Muffins originated in Britain in the 18th century and were later introduced in North America in the 19th century. Bran muffins have been a beloved breakfast choice for many years. It is known for its health benefits, unique flavor, and wholesome ingredients. 
They gained popularity in the 70s as a nutritious breakfast staple. A muffin is a part-raised flatbread. It's typically unsweetened and cooked on a grill or a chemically leavened quick bread. Often sweetened and baked in a mold. They were made with various ingredients like fruit, nuts, and spices to enhance their taste. It comes in two primary flavors, blueberry or chocolate chip muffins. It comes in less sweetened flavors like corn, cheese, and bran muffins. Bran muffins have remained an enduring breakfast choice over the years. It's appreciated for its nutritional value and delicious taste. They continue to be enjoyed by many people. They can be found in bakeries and cafes. People looking for a nutritious and tasty breakfast treat can also make them at home. Brunches were complete with the following famous items from the 1970s nostalgia. But Giuseppe brings you this famous quiche, quiche Lorraine, snap frozen to bake fresh in your oven. Quiche Lorraine. Quiche Lorraine is a French pie filled with egg, cream, and bacon. It gained popularity in the 1970s and 80s, becoming a fashionable choice that could be served hot or cold. Quiche evolved from a simple meal prepared by farmers using essential ingredients readily available in the countryside, eggs, cream, bacon, and dough. It's known for its balance of flavors, with a creamy custard base made from eggs and cream providing a backdrop to the savory bacon and cheese. Each bite offers tasty tastes that dance on the taste buds, leaving a lasting impression. It continues to be made and enjoyed globally, with various modern variations depending on regional ingredients and flavors. It's a versatile dish found in many restaurants and homes. This country loves McDonald's just as it loves the next popular dish introduced by it. Sausage McMuffin with egg. If you think they sound good, they've got fizzle in the middle. Wait till you taste them. McDonald's and you. The Sausage and Egg McMuffin. The Sausage and Egg McMuffin was first introduced by McDonald's in 1975. It was created as part of McDonald's breakfast menu expansion during this period. It became an iconic fast food breakfast item. It appealed to consumers looking for a satisfying breakfast option worldwide. It featured a pork sausage patty, a free-range egg, and a slice of cheese, all served on a toasted English muffin. It was a delicate balance of flavors, with the savory sausage, creamy egg, and melted cheese complementing each other. The sausage and Egg McMuffin is still manufactured and sold by McDonald's as part of their breakfast menu. Sausage and Egg McMuffins are enjoyed at all the restaurants worldwide. Fondue was what everyone was fond of. Fondue Breakfast Breakfast fondue, popularized in the 1960s and 70s, was a variation of the traditional fondue concept. Diners would dip bread or fruit into warm melted cheese or chocolate, offering a unique interactive breakfast experience. The flavors varied with different cheeses or chocolates, creating savory or sweet combinations that paired well with the dipping items. Families embraced this trend for its fun, communal vibe, letting everyone enjoy various dipping options. Fondue remains a popular dining experience, and versions like breakfast fondue can still be found in homes or restaurants offering distinctive culinary experiences. Who recalls the most accessible go-to breakfast without getting into the dining mess? French Toast Sticks French toast has a long history, dating back to ancient Rome. It was not invented in France, as the name originated with Joseph French, who created the dish in 1724. French Toast Sticks were a convenient twist on traditional French toast aimed at the quick and easy breakfast market. It offered a convenient way to enjoy the flavors of traditional French toast. They were typically dunkable and had a slightly crispy exterior with a soft and flavorful interior. The taste was familiar to French toast. French toast sticks were preferred by individuals looking for a quick and easy breakfast option with the essence of traditional French toast, but in a convenient and portable form. Today, French toast sticks are commonly available in the frozen breakfast section of grocery stores and are produced by various food manufacturers. Some popular brands include Farm Rich, Members Mark, and Cristo. Who doesn't love the comfort food of the nation? Corned beef hash offers a delightful combination of all your favorite ingredients in one meal. Beef and potatoes to chew, crisp through and through.
brew. Mm, party too. Merry kitchen, merry kitchen hash. I love you. Corned beef hash. Hash is derived from the French word hacher, meaning to chop. It is a way to use leftovers. Due to rationing, the dish was mainly popular in countries like Britain and France during and after the Second World War. Corned beef hash became a part of the American diet in the 19th century. The hash houses or cheap restaurants serve this hearty dish. The Hormel Company claims to have introduced corned and roast beef hash to the United States in 1950. It was a chopped corned beef, potatoes and onions dish. It offered a savory flavor with the saltiness of the corned beef complementing the mild potatoes and onions. The dish was often served with eggs, adding a rich and creamy element. Corned beef hash was more popular in the 1970s. The meal was appreciated for its comforting and filling qualities. It was a substantial breakfast or brunch option for those looking for a satisfying meal. Corned beef hash is still made and enjoyed today with variations and recipes available in homes and restaurants. The dish remains a classic comfort food option that continues to be appreciated by those seeking a flavorful and hearty meal. Do you recollect the Grape Nuts Flakes? Ahead of its time for the unique flavored cereal. Grape Nuts is natural wheat and barley, fortified with vitamins. Tastes nutty, you. Crunchy, too. Grape Nuts Flakes. Grape Nuts was a breakfast cereal brand developed by C.W. Post in 1897. It consisted of flour, salt, and dried yeast. It was made by baking it as a rigid sheet, then breaking it into pieces and running it through a coffee grinder. Grape Nuts Flakes were introduced as a variation of the original Grape Nuts cereal. It contained sugar, whole grain wheat flour, and malted barley flour found in the original Grape Nuts. This gave the flakes a slightly sweeter taste than the original Crunchy Nuggets. Grape Nuts Flakes were particularly popular during the 1970s, appealing to consumers seeking a more fibrous and nutritious breakfast option. The flake format provided a different texture and eating experience than the original Grape Nuts. It continues to be manufactured and sold by Post Consumer Brands, the current owner of the Grape Nuts brand. They're still available as a variation of the classic Grape Nuts cereal. What was the most convenient breakfast option at that time? Of course, Eggo! Here, the early bird gets the Eggo. Gently put in the Eggo as not to arouse any sleeping taste buds. <laughs> Eggo Waffles Eggo Waffles were invented in 1953 by the Dorsa brothers, Anthony Dorsa, Samuel Dorsa, and Frank Dorsa in San Jose, California. Before creating frozen waffles, the brothers were known for their mayonnaise and potato chip business. The brothers originally called their product Frothles, a combination of frozen and waffles. Despite its name, customers started referring to it as Eggos due to their egg flavor. Eggo waffles were designed to be prepared quickly and easily. This allowed customers to toast them from frozen. The waffles were known for their eggy taste and fluffy texture. Eggo waffles became a freezer staple in the 1970s, celebrated for their toast from frozen simplicity and homemade style taste. In 1970, Kellogg's acquired the Eggo brand and began marketing it with the famous Lego My Eggo slogan. Under Kellogg's ownership, Eggo has expanded its product line to include various flavors and formats, such as French toast sticks and pancakes. Eggo remains North America's best-selling frozen waffle brand, a title it has held since Kellogg's acquisition. A healthy germ? Who would have thunk it? We're talking about the top health food of the 1970s, wheat germ. Count on Kretschmer wheat germ to help me maintain energy and fitness. Add it to any food with natural protein, minerals, and vitamins B and E. Wheat germ. Wheat germ is the embryo of the wheat grain, which is removed while making white flour. Although it's been around for a long time, it gained popularity as a health food in the 1950s and 60s. Wheat germ has a mild, nutty flavor that can be easily blended into various foods. It's highly nutritious, containing many vitamins, minerals, fiber, protein, and healthy fats. Wheat germ was often added to cereals, smoothies, and other dishes to boost their nutritional value, appealing to health-conscious people looking to add more nutrients to their diets. Wheat germ is still widely available and produced by various brands, including Bob's Red Mill. It's still a nutritional supplement and ingredient in different food products. Innovation knows no bounds. 
This was proved when the egg in a basket first emerged. Sunshine Egg The sunshine egg, also known as egg in a basket, is a breakfast item where an egg is cooked in the center of a piece of bread. It was a refreshing variation from the typical breakfast choice. The sunshine egg typically combined the flavors of a runny egg yolk with a toasted bread, creating a comforting breakfast dish. The taste varied depending on the preparation method and any additional seasonings or toppings used. It was considered a novelty breakfast item and appreciated for its simplicity and unique presentation. It was enjoyed by individuals looking for a creative and fun twist on traditional eggs and toast. The dish is still enjoyed by many and can be found on the menus of various breakfast establishments. It's also made at home by individuals looking for a delicious nostalgic breakfast. What was like a dream for sweet tooth people? The answer is simple. Now there's an easier way to get that honey sweet crunch you crave with a blast of strawberry flavor. New strawberry blasted honeycomb already assembled in this handy box and part of this good breakfast. You are so grounded. Honeycomb cereal. Post Holdings introduced Honeycomb Cereal in 1965. It was known for its sweet taste, particularly from the honey flavoring. The original version had a light honey flavor that was manageable. Honeycomb Cereal was at its peak popularity in the 1970s, and it was appreciated for its unique shape and sweet taste. It's still available and owned by Post Holdings, a part of Post Consumer Brands. In 2006, Post changed the formula for honeycomb cereal to make it healthier. The idea received negative reviews from consumers. This led to the introduction of new versions, including strawberry blasted honeycomb, chocolate honeycomb, and cinegram honeycomb, which were also criticized. Honeycomb cereal had several mascots, including the honeycomb kid, crazy craving, and Bernard, the b-boy. These mascots were used in various marketing campaigns and commercials, often featuring memorable jingles and catchphrases. And it's still available to this very day. Pass the buck, pass the buck, pass the buckwheats. Let's relive the charm of this famous slogan of an equally popular brand. Getting the big bold buckwheats tasted breakfast. Pass the buck, pass the buck, pass the buckwheats. Buckwheat cereal. Buckwheats was introduced in 1971 by General Mills. It had a distinctive taste due to its unique formula of wheat and buckwheat mixed with a maple flavored coating. It was a popular cereal in the 1970s known for its high nutritional value and taste. People liked this cereal because of its health benefits. Moms around the world preferred it as a breakfast option for their champs. Buckwheats was marketed as a highly nutritious cereal that contained 100% of the minimum daily requirements for vitamins and iron. In 1974, General Mills aired a catchy jingle for Buckwheats titled, Feeling Like a Million Bucks. Buckwheat cereal was discontinued by General Mills around 1983 due to low sales. The company lost sales after replacing the original maple syrup glaze with a honey coating. This change was met with negative reviews from customers. The consumers disliked the taste and stopped buying it altogether leading to declining sales and eventual discontinuation. What made Post fortified oat flakes so irresistible that fans would crawl through a field of broken glass for a bowl? Tastes good. I think it's great. Has a different flavor. I like it. What is it? Fortified Oat Flakes Fortified Oat Flakes cereal was introduced by Post Holdings in 1970. This beloved breakfast option is known for its unique flavor and high nutritional content. Consumers praised its lightly toasted, slightly sweet taste and hearty texture, making it a favorite among those seeking a nutritious and delicious cereal choice. The cereal was marketed with the tagline, taste something different for breakfast, emphasizing its distinctiveness and appeal to consumers looking for a new breakfast experience. Fortified Oat Flakes had an addictive quality that many consumers found irresistible. It was preferred over sugary cereals due to its delicious flavor and nutritional benefits. The cereal's popularity was evident from the numerous comments expressing a strong desire for its return, with nostalgic fans reminiscing about its unique taste and calling for its revival. Despite being discontinued, Fortified Oat Flakes 
left a lasting impression on those who enjoyed its wholesome and satisfying qualities, with many expressing a deep longing for its comeback. One of the demands for returning fortified oat flake cereal was, I would crawl on my hands and knees through a field of broken glass for a bowl of post-fortified oat flakes. They were the best. The cereal's loyal fan base and the demand for its return highlighted fortified oat flakes' impact on consumers.